This is an activity that will help you introduce the concept of ecology. This is made for my ninth grade biology class, and this is a demonstration of an activity for teachers. The concepts covered in this activity are the idea that ecology is the study of the interactions between living things and their environments, uh, the difference between environmental or abiotic factors and living or biotic factors. It looks at adaptations to ecosystems and the levels of organizations within ecosystems. This is great for kinesthetic learners and also visual learners. It incorporates, of course, biology content and art skills as well. But you do not, you and your kids do not actually have to be good at drawing to do this. The materials, you just need a large index card. Um, for, so for each student, one large index card four regular size index cards and um, either three small sticky notes or um, two large sticky notes cut in half per kid and then something to draw with if all they have is pen and pencil that's fine but if you want to get colorful then that's good too the lowdown is basically they're going to think about a an environment that they've traveled to that they like to get them engaged. Um, there's some note taking about the major concepts. Then they're going to make cards that will represent the different levels of organization and ecosystems. They'll trade those with others and put the other person's cards in order based on their drawings. And they'll do this with multiple different students. And then for adaptations, they will make sticky notes with. Um, the factor and the adaptation and uh, stick them on their own and go around and stick those on other students organisms. So before the activity um, I have students think of a place that they've traveled to where nature has inspired or fascinated them and so the night before I have them make a Google Doc with a description of that place and a picture of that ecosystem. It's fine if it's somewhere that they haven't been, but they need to know a lot about it. Um, but it's better if it's somewhere they've actually been to. Of course, they could also just talk about this in class at the beginning of class. So here's my example. A student said, um, gave this description and picture of Mono Lake in Northern California and its Tufa Towers. So it's a pretty unique ecosystem. Okay, so in class day one, um, they can share in pairs or threes about the ecosystem that they just described here. Uh, and then um, for notes, you can make your own notes or show a video. Um, in the description of this video, I'll put a link to the video I made. Um, depending on time, I will show the video in class and actually pause, letting them take notes. Or if I have less time, we'll just watch the video straight through and then they can write down the notes um, later, like that night for homework. But as long as they get the big idea and the big concepts before the activity, that's what's important. So the first day is pretty much going to be spent on getting big ideas and prep. So the first thing they're going to be given is a large index card and they need to write the name of their ecosystem on the front and where in the world it is. So my example, I used Shark Valley, which is near Miami, Florida. It actually has no sharks in it at all, but it's still called Shark Valley. And then on the back of the big card, they'll put a line down the middle and on the left, they'll put the environmental or non-living abiotic factors, a list of those. And then um, on the right hand side, they'll list uh, the biotic factors in that ecosystem. So here's my example. Uh, and I try to be sure and include all the different little things that I had in the notes, right? About like air and temperature and water availability and soil and all those kinds of things, different organisms that prey on each other, not just animals, but I try and include um, you know, plants and I've got some archaea here too. After they do that, then I pass out four three by five cards and on the front of each of those they just need to put the uh, names of the levels of organization, ecosystem, community, population, and organism. And then this is the fun part. Then on the back of each card 
they will draw um, a picture that corresponds with the name on the front. So in my Shark Valley, that's my alligator. Uh, I encourage them that you do not have to be good at drawing as long as I can actually tell what it is that you're drawing. And my population, right, more than one individual of the same species. So there's my uh, population of alligators. My community, right, all the living things in an ecosystem, living only. So insects, herons, grass, alligators, trees, and hingas are all there. Some students will want to, if they have fish, they'll want to, like, put water with the fish in it. But I have to tell them, no, no, it's just a drawing of a fish. It's not going to die or drown if you don't have it in water. So no non-living things at all. It needs to be only living things in this picture. And then it's when they do the ecosystem part, then they can add you know, the sun and the clouds and the water and that kind of stuff. So the next day we actually do something with these. Now you can do this a couple different ways. Um, if you have a large class and it's not really good for everybody to be up and walking around all the time, perhaps they should just trade their card set. So this this is their set of four cards, not their big one, um, with the person next to them, right? Mixing them up and looking only at the side that has the pictures, and then they have to try based on the pictures only to put them in order: ecosystem, community, population, organism. Um, and it should be pretty easy. A lot of kids, though, will get ecosystem and community mixed up. So that's kind of the main, you know, thing to watch for. And they can do this with multiple different kids. And you check yourself by flipping the cards over once you have them in what you think is the right order and seeing if they fall into the right order, ecosystem, community, population, organism. Um, so they can just trade with people near them or you can have them put them on their desk and get up and walk around and try it with multiple different kids being sure to shuffle and turn them on the drawing side after. Then for part two of the activity, so that, that first part, part one was looking at uh, levels of organization. That was the main topic. Number two, uh, part two is looking at adaptations. So the students need to go back to their own desk and set up their cards like this. So their big card, the environmental, like the biotic and environmental factor side up. They need their whole ecosystem card and then they need their individual organism card because now we're going to be looking at adaptations. So we want each kid to have three stick either the small sticky notes or I have here I cut a large sticky note in half and so on their sticky notes they start with their own organism so they need to write one environmental factor or biotic factor on the top of the sticky note and then the adaptation that the organism has to that factor on the bottom so in mine I have um, fish and birds are the prey for alligators and so <clears throat> so their adaptation is that they have sharp teeth to help catch them so you put that on your own and you also want to put it near where the adaptation actually is then the students with their two other sticky notes will roam around and look at other students um, organisms and try to add sticky notes to other people's cards thinking about they can reflect on what the environmental and biotic factors are that are listed at the big card and then they can label different factors so there may be lots of different animals and plants but we want to be sure that they're evenly spread out so there shouldn't be any more than three sticky notes on a card by the end so that's basically the end of the activity itself. Um, and so for assessment at the end, you know, you can just write a basic quiz about adaptations and about levels of organization and the major concepts. 
Um, I just encourage you to actually use pictures on your quiz. Don't just use words because in biology in general, it's great to be visual. Um, and especially with these things, if you're trying to distinguish between like a community and an ecosystem, it's nice to have a picture to compare. Um, or as they go through the activity, another thing they can be doing is taking photos of their results from part one. So, you know, what like the set of drawings that they put in order and then see if that's the and then maybe flip those over and show where they are um, if they got them in the correct order and so they could put those pictures in a Google Doc or a Google slide and share with you for you to check those or you can mix it up and do both or you can do something else all together different it's your prerogative so you know what works for your class in your time. So those are, that's the activity. That's uh, an intro to ecology activity. And I hope it works for you.